Oh, hey there. Welcome back to my studio. My name is Rick Manners. Um, there's been some rumors going around between my family and my friends that I'm a little bit nuts about M&Ms. So I'm here today to put those rumors to rest. They're totally, totally true. So, excuse me for a second. What I want to do with this video, I'm going to show you part of my big collection here. Now, if people go through my studio, you'll see I've got all kinds of M&M's dispensers from Mars. I've got all kinds of the little candy fans, figurines, plush ones. This video is not going to be about any of that. Most M&M's collectors have most of that, that those items. I also have a lot of NASCAR diecast cars. Um, there's a lot of 124, 164, but I don't seriously collect those because there's way too many of them. There's like hundreds and hundreds of different paint schemes from throughout the different years that M&Ms and Mars has been sponsoring NASCARs. I don't seriously collect those, but you will see them throughout the showcase. What I collect are the odd cars. I love street cars, muscle cars, uh, custom hot rods. I collect um, everything from motorcycles to boats to snowmobiles. Anything that's got the M&M's racing sponsorship on it, that's what I have. So that's what I'm going to feature in this video today. But before we begin, we need to have a little bit of a backstory as to where I'm coming from with, with my collection. So the best place to start any story is definitely at the beginning. And he's the M&M's Candies Man. Who dumps M&M's? Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on, this is, this is like way, way too far back. Hang on for one second, just a second here now. Let's start probably back about it early 60s as a, as a kid. My fondest memories of die-cast cars were these little wee uh, die-cast vehicles from Matchbox. Now, these are little cars that came in a little cardboard box, not much bigger than the size of a box of wooden matches. And I think that's where they get the name from Matchbox. But they were standard vehicles like station wagons and, and construction vehicles. And they didn't roll very well, but we used to call them pocket cars because they were just the right size for a little boy to stick in his pocket. The next memory I have is this one, which is a Corgi James Bond Aston Martin DB5. Now, it was bigger. It was about a 132 scale, so it was bigger than the 164 matchboxes, but it was cool. It had wire wheels. It actually did things. It had a little plastic guy that shot out of the ejector seat through the roof. It had a pop-up bulletproof shield on the back. It had machine guns that popped out of the front. So it actually encouraged your imagination by playing with this die-cast car. It was so, so amazing. My next memory was Thunderbirds. Now, Thunderbirds was a Saturday morning cartoon, not done very well. They were like little marionette puppets, but the vehicles were really space age, you know, rocket ships. This one, Thunderbird 2, was a flying machine that had two rocket motors on the back. It could take off and land vertically like a helicopter. The center section dropped out and out popped out of the cargo section, this little Thunderbirds 4, which was like a little space age submarine. So it really got your imagination going as a kid to play with this, this vehicle. Now, when I growing up as a kid, we had two businesses in Burlington that were absolutely pivotal to me as a child. One was our hobby store. We had a hobby shop on Brant Street, and there you could get your your, your plastic model kits, we could get paint, glues, you can get slot car parts, balsa wood. It was just so great to have that nearby. We also had a little variety store called Little's Variety, and you could also get model kits there and paints, and also our hot rod magazines, plus everything a, a growing kid needs, like chocolate bars and bubblegum cards and all the, the, the healthy stuff. I threw this picture in because it is very important to me in my development from a kid. This is actually Big Daddy Ed Roth demonstrating to a bunch of young boys at a hobby store his drawing ability, his designs. And the kids are fascinated with watching what he's putting on this piece of paper, with the exception of this young lad. And he's absolutely fascinated with what's in this guy's head. 
What, where were these ideas and this imagination coming from? And that was me as a child. Because we would, I would pick up all our magazines, like I say, from Little's Variety and bring them home. I had, I have hundreds of, of hot rod and model car magazines, drag cartoons, and I still have them today. But these were absolute instrumental in my designing of cartoons. And I used to love to draw animated um, uh, cartoon cars. And I actually, when I built a custom car, I made a whole comic strip based on the adventures of this little car called Hot Rod and his driver and his rivals. And my imagination just went absolutely nuts with a pencil. And I drew all the time, all my life. I was really big into, and so were my friends in the neighborhood, into plastic model kits. And you can see there's a little Hot Rod in the middle. But I actually built a scale drag strip that actually worked. We had little nylon strings that you could pull the cars down the drag strip. And this is very important to me today as an artist because this taught me hand and eye coordination for painting and gluing and working with parts designing and molding and creating with what i had available now in the manners household saturday mornings were our ritual mom and dad were up in bed trying to sleep in and myself and my three siblings would gather in front of the television on a saturday morning sometimes as early as six in the morning to watch the best animated classic cartoons, such as Clutch Cargo, Popeye, Hercules, Beanie and Cecil, Space Ghost, Adam Ant, Mighty Mouse, Underdog, and of course that rascally rabbit, Bugs. But by far, my favorite animated cartoon was Johnny Quest. I loved it every episode of Johnny Quest. Here was a, a young boy that traveled all over the world with his father. They had adventures, absolutely the coolest monsters that they had to deal with. So while we're watching Johnny Quest, this commercial popped up that changed everything. the fastest metal cars you've ever seen. Mattel's new Hot Wheels. Collect them by themselves or get them in wild new action sets like the Drag Race action set. These were die-cast cars that weren't like the matchboxes. These things actually rolled and the designs were so cool. They weren't just standard cars and construction vehicles. The, the Python, the Beatnik Bandit, the Silhouette, the Diora, the Volkswagen, the, the Hot Heap. These were amazing vehicles. Now, I've gone through all our archives of, of images from me as a kid. The only thing I could find was an 8 millimeter film that father took on one Christmas morning, and I had gotten the plastic rally case for Christmas. And here I am showing my original 16 Hot Wheels, and it's only about five seconds long. And this was what kick-started my collection or collecting of die-cast vehicles. Now, that's basically the backstory to my childhood. But come 1972, we had moved. I'm about to get ready to start high school in the new house. I never did put the... Um, drag strip back together. I think my youngest brother, Steve, ended up getting my Hot Wheels, probably my plastic cars. I got more into, as a teenager, more into music. So for the next 38 years, I don't think I ever thought once about miniature automobiles. Till one day, I'm working for a company called the Grimsby Benevolent Fund. And I was there to do the media and marketing for the company. I also managed the shipping and receiving for their retail store. They had a retail store of used furniture, clothing, household items that they used to fund their community programs and the local food bank. So one day I'm walking through the retail store in 2010. And what do I see on the shelf? An orange El Camino. And it's a die cast car. It's pretty big. It's 118 style. I pick it up. It's got some really cool weight to it. But it, the design is weird. It's almost like cartoonish style. And I just went, oh, this is absolutely phenomenal. Flipped it over. Funline muscle machines. I'd never heard of this before. Funline muscle machines. But it's really cool. Up to my office, got on the Google and found out that these were cars based on the illustrations from an artist called Rohan Day. And he illustrated cartoonish style muscle cars trucks it was he just had an absolutely phenomenal 
graphic illustration. I went through his portfolio and there do I see a yellow 1970 CUDA with the black AAR stripe on it with a supercharger blower coming through. Hang on, let's get down to the bay, down to eBay. Let's see what's there. And sure enough, there's the 70 CUDA. Well, I click here and I click there and I click over here. Next thing you know, I've got my first die cast car in almost 40 years. Get back on the surfing once that one had arrived. You know, my buddy Gary was really into, into Plymouth and Dodge. And sure enough, what do I find? A 69 Mustang. I was the Mustang guy. A Boss 302 with the black louvered windows and the, and the wing on the back. And again, the supercharger, the fuel lines, the belt. Absolutely phenomenal. Two of them are going to be better than one for sure. So as I'm going through again, what the is this? It's a 40 delivery sedan in yellow. Well, yellow's got to be the, the color of choice now. But it's in a NASCAR theme from Elliott Sadler. Now, I really hadn't followed NASCAR that much. In my artistic career, I had done, this was a huge mural I did in Toronto of Turn 1 of Michigan Speedway. And I'd followed Earnhardt and Rusty Wallace quite a bit. And I also did a guitar for a country and western singer when Earnhardt had passed away. But that was about the extent of my... Uh, NASCAR involvement. Um, so I did a quick little research about the M&Ms one and found out that they had they had been sponsoring NASCAR for quite a, quite a few years. And in 1998, well, actually they started out as Skittles, and then in 1998, Ernie Irving took over as the driver. And then he had a backup driver in '99 when um, Irvin had crashed at Jerry Nadeau. Following him came Kenny Schrader, and he. Drove from 2000 to 2002. Elliot Sadler took over in 2003 to 06 when he had a major crash. And David Gillian took over for the following year, 2007. And then from 2008 to the present day today, Kyle Busch has been the, the driver for the Mars M&M sponsorship. So that kind of um, ends the backstory, a little bit of history about the M&M's racing sponsorship, as well as, as myself as a kid. So that's kind of my obsession now today with, with M&M's. Okay. So what I want you to do is sit back, grab a handful of your favorite snack, and let's go take a cruise through my main showcase. So I'd like to get this tour started by welcoming you to my little piece of the M&M's world. So I'm going to start first with this coat. This coat was uh, one that I picked up from a friend of mine, and it's a JH Design Elliott Sadler racing coat. And it, it hangs there proudly as at the entrance of my, my studio. And then if we pan over here to this side of the shelf, you're going to see this Nano Speed NASCARs. This is from X Concepts, and this is actually the Joe Gibbs Racing Team. And I have all of the cars of the Nano except for the Kyle Busch one. And it took me the longest while to find that set of three with a little wee tiny number 18 in, in there. And as we pan across the shelf here, this is actually the McFarland Elliott Sadler figurine. And it's kind of neat because he's uh, there with this holding up the uh, bottle of Coke. And uh, next to him is Boyd's Racing Family. And this is the little collectible ornaments. I don't know if they're Christmas ornaments or not. And in the back corner here is Motorworks number 38 Elliott Sadler. And it's a 164 scale car that's actually a remote control. You can see the little antenna there. And then over in this corner, as you come across the shelf, you're going to see these are Trevco Christmas ornaments. And I had picked them up from a... Uh, a hobby store or one of the shows that we were at. And I've got the actual uh, Christmas ornament with the M&M's characters on it. And also I was able to pick up the little ornament racing helmets from M&M's. And I've got uh, uh, this one on this side of the shelf and I've got one on the other side as well. And then as we pan over into this corner, this is one of the pieces that I truly love. This is from Fly Slot, and it's an actual 132 scale M&M's man truck. And it's an actual working slot car, 132 scale. And it, the detail on it is just absolutely fabulous. And I picked that up on eBay from a seller in Spain. And then similar to that, Ravel has a series of these what are called Fun Cup cars. And this is actually a 132 scale 
uh, VW Beetle Fun Cup, and it's an actual working slot car as well, 132 scale. And then next to that is the Hot Wheels 2001, um, and this is way too fast. Next to that is the Forever Collectibles Mini Bobblehead, and it's a little figure, weird little figurine of Elliot Sadler. And beside that is the Racing Champions Stock Rods. Okay, and this is the this 1968 Gold Firebird in the um, 164 scale. And beside that is the Hot Wheels 2002 Limousine with the M&M's sponsorships on it. A neat little piece. Racing Champion Stock Rods Kenny Schrader. This is a 1966 GTO. And this is actually quite a large scale GTO, a 118th scale. Nice big heavy die cast. Beautiful detail on it inside and out. And then one of my favorites is also the Racing Champion Stock Rods. This is the Pontiac Drag Pro Stock car, and it's a 124 scale. Now, they had this car in, in both the yellow and they have a gold version of it as well. But again, I love, I love the yellow ones. And in the back corner here is the Hot Wheels 2001 snowmobile called Big Chill. They have a, I have a whole series of these, but again, I, I love the M&M's one. It's 164 scale. This is actually from um, a Castaway, Elliot Sadler Ranger Bass Boat and Trailer. And this is a 124 scale. This was a really hard one to find as well. And the detail is phenomenal. It's got the fishing rods and the fishing lures, the swivel boats. The detail on this piece is absolutely phenomenal, top-notch. Top uh, I'm very proud to have this piece in, in my actual collection. Back to Racing Champions Stock Rods. This is a 1978 Pontiac Trans Am 164 with the T-top. Hot Wheels. Love Hot Wheels. 2001 Anglia Panel Truck. I love panel trucks. And this was, was a neat one to, to find. 164 scale. Now over to here, this was kind of, this is a custom racing actions. Pontiac Grand Prix, and uh, I picked it up probably at a, at a toy show or something. It was pretty beat up. Some kids had bashed it around, so I kind of decided to make my own custom of it and put a, a muscle machine uh, blower, a supercharger through it, had to shorten it up, and th threw uh, a six-barrel carb on the top of the fan belt, changed the wheels on it, added the wing on the back and the wheelie, wheelie bar, and made my own little custom version of that. And then over to here is the actual Funline series. Now, this is what actually got me started into collecting diecast, but also the M&M's version. And this is actually from Funline Action Muscle Machines, 1966 Mustang in the 118th scale. And then in the front here is the uh, Funline Action Muscle Machines, 1940 Ford Delivery Sedan. And that's in the 118 scale. And this is the actual die cast that got me, got that peanut seed planted that actually started my uh, my collection of M&M's related sponsorship die cast cars. And then beside that is also the 49 Merc. And again, it's a, a 118 scale, just some really neat detail. And I love the double barrel shotgun intake scoops on, on this as well. I have a lot of my cars I've converted over to the, the double barrel now, this one was kind of neat, too. This is the Motorsports Editions. It's called One Sweet Ride, and it's the Kyle Busch Motorcycle. And I do believe it's a resin cast, so the wheels actually don't, don't turn on it. But it's a very limited edition uh, motorcycle. It's 112th scale. I love having that one in, in the collection. This is actually from Hot Wheels. It's called Thunder Rides. It's a motorcycle chopper. I think it's a 114th scale. I'm not 100% sure, but it seems to be about that, that size scale. It's, it's kind of neat. It's got some neat detail to it. Next to that comes one of my favorites, Hot Wheels Cool Combi. It's the M&M's Gold Edition one. I love the hundred that for that one for quite a while, and it's, it's kind of neat to have that one in, in the collection. Hot Wheels again, 1995 VW Drag Bus. Again, 164. I love VW, anything to do VWs. And of course, the Drag Bus with the, the M&M's uh, liveries on it. Next to that is the 2011 Smoke and Grill from M&M's, the little uh, hot rod food truck. Smoke and Grill. Next to that one is American Diecast Company. 
It's the Kyle Busch late model dirt track car. It's just a little wee 164 scale, but it's got some really neat detail with the, the letter tires and all the, the sponsorships on it and, and Rowdy Nation on there as well. Next one is the Racing Champion Stock Rod. It is a 66 GTO in the gold version. I think I have the yellow and I have the gold as well in that car. Next to that is the Hot Wheels Luxury Rides Kenny Schrader Tour Bus. And that's a really neat. It's all a steel die cast, like an aluminum die cast. It's got some great weight to it. Great detail with the leather tires on it as well. L I love that little tour bus. Next to that is Racing Champions. This is a little 164 remote control car of Ernie Irving's sponsorship with the M&Ms, number 36. And it's got the, the little pit box as the remote control piece and the the start line there is the charger. You put the little car in there and it charges it. Really, really cool little piece. Next to that is Racing Champions. These were made for little kids, smaller kids, but I love the cartoon look to this car. And that's a Racing Champions 2002 Little Racers of Kenny Schrader. And it's a little friction car and it's got the little 36 sticker as well. Kids can stick it on there wherever they want to, want to put it. Now, these are neat, too. These are fun line action muscle machines. They came out with a series of actual NAS cars. Now, they're not to scale. They've got that cartoonish look to the body style. But instead of having the supercharger and the blower coming through the hood, they've actually got the big V8 engine block coming through. And then the air cleaner on top, the naturally aspirated air cleaner goes on top of that. But this was a neat one, too, because when I picked this car up, it came with a metal base and then the seller was was telling me that this car was actually a prototype a post-production prototype before they actually went into mass production of the car because the mass production ones had the gray plastic bases this one had a metal red base so that was kind of kind of unique with that car and then of course I, I made a custom of it too i got one of the actual production ones and i didn't like the black rims so i changed the rims to uh to chrome and then again i took out the v8 block and i put the 124 scale muscle machines uh supercharger and blower and i built my own fan belt through some uh some spark plug wires on there and uh changed the tires a little bit and made my own little custom on that now this is a really interesting one that same seller i bought the prototype sold me these two as well. And these are 164 scale, the uh, fun line action muscle machines of Elliott Sadler, but they're prototypes. So they never did put these into production. They came without the air cleaners. I had a couple of spare little air cleaners on there. I, I put on there as well, but here he, I've got part of this is part of the email that he sent me when I purchased them through eBay saying that these cars came from actions production department and were never produced. So these are kind of my, my crown jewel in my collection. They have these two little M and M's cars. Okay. Monster trucks. Uh, they came up again, muscle machines with action came out with, uh, two sizes of, of a monster truck with the M&Ms on it, 143rd scale. And back in the corner over here is the 164 scale, the monster truck with the M&Ms. Some really neat detail on there too with all the, the shocks and the framework. Back to racing champions. This is a, a stock rod. This is the gold 68 Firebird. Okay, and that's again, 164 scale. Next to that is again a Racing Champion Stock Rods 2002. It's a 1937 Rapid Coupe Kenny Schrader, number 36. It's a beautiful little car. It looks like it's probably a convertible. I don't know if that little plastic top comes off or not. Over to here, this is a custom five window coupe. So I had this big remote control. I think that's about a 1 16th scale. So I took the plastic wheels off of it and I put some nice big thick big rubber tires on there i had a spare supercharger and scoop from a muscle machine and i got that put onto there i added the wheelie bars i blacked in the back windows molded them all into the body and i molded an actual m right onto the back trunk of, of the the car itself to make my own little custom well, actually it's big 116 scale over to trevco again i've got another christmas ornament this is santa in uh, elliot sadler's car as a, as a christmas ornament Hanging there on display. Over to this side. This is again another custom I built. This is a Mars, one of the candy dispensers of, of the hot rod. And I actually got rid of the tires and I had some spare one eight scale foam dragster tires. And I put those on and put the rubber. And here you've got red taking out the green twins out for a cruise. 
Oh, that red, he's he's quite the character. Now, this originally was the M&M's dispenser of the fire truck, and I took that and cut it all apart, and I built my own flatbed hauler out of it, changed the lights on it, widened the whole back end of it, changed the wheels, and it's an actual working flatbed. Now, this is kind of interesting. I, I always look at, at the characters themselves. I'm quite fascinated with anything to do with animation, but I always imagine how would these guys actually drive a, an automobile that was made for human beings. They got little short stubby arms and legs. Let's explore that just for a second. This is not like Kyle at all. Are we winning? Uh, I thought you were looking. <laughs> well, that answers a lot of questions. This is, is kind of a, a neat piece. This is a, a Jada light and sound action Kyle Bush car, and it does all kinds of neat little sounds on it and light the lights light up. Um, I hunted for this thing. I had everyone in, in the series except for Kyle Bush's, and I finally did get it. But I don't like black rims. There's something about black rims that kind of turned me off. So the first thing I did was I changed the tires on there, chromed up the rims as well. But if you look in the background of this shot, you're going to see a quick little sneak pre preview of my latest build. And uh, it's, again, it's dealing with uh, these little animated characters. And I try and figure out how do these guys drive automobiles when they got these little short stubby arms and stubby legs. That's, I guess that says, says quite a, quite a lot. <laughs> so hold on now. We interrupt this video to bring you a quick message from one of our sponsors. I told you the Crystal Skull would lead us to the Mint Crisp M&M's. Snakes. I hate snakes. Would you knock it off? Discover Mint Crisp M&M's. Well, that kind of leads into the next piece. I, I wasn't going to show any of these the actual stock cars that I have, but I love this one. My wife got me this one for Christmas, and it's signed by Kyle Busch, and it's the Indiana Jones. Now, they came out with uh, two variations of this, the actual car itself, and they also have a race damage version. Racing Champions, it's a Sportsman Series 2000 Chevy Suburban. And again, it was a really tough one to try and find. It's a big 118th scale. Big, big, heavy die cast. Got lots of really neat detail. The door is all open. Okay, over, as we come out of that showcase, we're going to come over to this far side here. Now, up on top, I normally don't collect a, a lot of the haulers, but I have all, I have three of them from the three manufacturers, Winter Circle, Hot Wheels, and the Racing Champions. And these are all 164 scale team transport cars. And I kind of like them all because they were all slightly different, different paint schemes and down here onto the bottom, this is a, a custom Mars. It's again, it's a candy dispenser from, from Mars. And uh, I like the, the sort of the easy rider chopper with blue. So I took an extra one and I made my own little yellow version, gave him his own custom little hat. Now that kind of concludes the tour part of, of my collection. I'm always looking for, I think there's probably a dozen pieces I'm still on the hunt for, but there are four that I'm really interested in, in trying to find. And one is the uh, 2002, I think it's called Phenon. It's the 164 scale. I'm also looking for the Brookfield Collectibles Guild, the Ernie Irving trackside collection, what's 124 scale with the, uh, the, uh, the truck, the trailer, and the hauler. I'm also looking for the Tomica 2012. It's a Chevy Corvette Z06. And it's one of the 75th anniversary cars for M&M's, 164 scale, as well as the uh, vendor trailer, the M&M's vendor trailer. It's again, 164 scale. I'm looking for that one as, as part of the collection as well. And I have a sign in my studio that said, I keep reminding my friends and family that these are not toys, they're adult collectibles. Always remember that, they're not toys. So again, with that being said, I would like to thank everybody for watching my video and please stay tuned for new and upcoming ones and thanks for watching.